Good day, everyone. Minister Albert Langston coming to you once again with our uh, weekly Sunday school lessons. Uh, let's begin first as we sh should do all things with a prayer. So if you bow your heads, Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you once again for, for seeing us through, for being there for us, for, for, for providing, for protecting us. Heavenly Father, we understand that you are the, are the creator. You deserve all the praise. You are our protector. You deserve all of the credit. So we ask that you continue to open our minds and our hearts as we pray during this pandemic season. Allow us to be able to learn the lessons that you would have us learn during these Sunday school presentations. For these and many other blessings, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Yes, we're, we've gathered together once again. We've seen another week. Um, and if you are following along in our Sunday school books, you've noticed that we have come to the to the to the end of yet another book, another quarter, and we're starting on in our new book. And our new book is entitled Wisdom. And my mother. Uh, I've grown up, growing up, Lillian Langston taught me that there were three books of the Bible that I required reading. They are Genesis, Proverbs, and Psalms. She went on to tell me the reasons why. She said that the book of Genesis tells me where we came from, how we became God's people why they were the chosen ones. So it provides that history. She said the book of Proverbs teaches us how to live our lives daily. And they would offer us wisdom. And then she went on to say that the book of Psalms teaches us how to praise God and to give thanks for all of our blessings. So as we begin our new book, and as we enter the book of Proverbs, we, just, we see that today's lesson comes from the book of, of Proverbs and is entitled, The Call of Wisdom. As we have done in the past, what because some of you may or may not have... Um, your Sunday school books, just in case you don't and you get an opportunity, uh, stop by the office. Uh, check to see if, if, if Sister Bonds is in the office or if you need a book, just contact me. Area code 901-337-5401 and I'll make sure that you get your, I'll make sure that you get a book. And that way you can read for yourself and keep along and keep up with the lessons that way. It's always easier when you can read for yourself. So um, uh, please keep that in mind. I, as I said, our first lesson is entitled The Call of Wisdom. And let me just start by saying the purpose of the book of Proverbs is will be summed up in chapter in, in chapter one, less, uh, verse number two. It says to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive to perceive the words of understanding. In other words, the purpose of Proverbs is to teach the readers wisdom, so that they will so that they will allow wisdom to govern their lives. And, you know, many of us behave foolishly 
but there hasn't been a foolish act that's been committed by man that is not addressed in the book of Proverbs. So, uh, uh, like, you know, I've taken to heart what mom, what mom has said, and yes, she was right. The book of Proverbs is one of the one of the essential readings of of the Bible. Now, uh, so, uh, turn to page two, and let's look at the in focus, because today's in focus it, uh, will, will draw us into what our discussions will be for today. So, on page two, the in focus reads this way. Make up clicking back and forth between the websites for her top college picks. Her grandmother, Daisy, could see May was getting frustrated. What's the matter, sweetie? I still can't decide which college I want to go to, May. Uh, 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 May replied. May showed her grandmother the pictures of both colleges with their sunny campuses, happy graduates, and winning athletes. They're both offering substantial financial aid. Both have active on-campus ministries. Both have the program I want. I can't decide. They both look so good. Daisy never had to make this decision herself, but I always wish she had gotten the opportunity. She often volunteered at a local Christian charity that offered tutoring and college admission guidance. I'm glad to know you've already considered the finances and how you will stay plugged in at church. What did you think of the campuses? May said. I haven't gotten to visit either of them. They're out of state, and we could hardly afford the hotels, much less the airfare. Well, you can't trust the college website to show you what the school is really like. Contact a student who goes there. Have you asked the colleges if they can help you pay for you to come to visit them? Some colleges do that. Some charities too. I might even have to pull I might even have some pool at a certain local charity, Daisy said, winking at May. Why is it important to seek wise counsel before making major decisions? In our in focus today, May was trying to select a college for her upcoming matriculation. She sought the advice of her grandmother because it was difficult to make a choice between several schools. They were out of town and they appeared to, to offer what she wanted. However, neither had a noticeable edge or advantage. So, really, May wanted to continue her church life as a part of her education. Since she was not able to visit the campuses herself, she desired assistance in making the final decision. It is always important to seek wise counsel when making important decisions in one's life. That, that way, you can learn from the experiences and mistakes of others. The book of Proverbs contains a lot of tidbits of living a happy and successful life. Remember, I told you that Lillian Langston taught me that one of the three books of the Bible that is required reading is Proverbs. 
May was trying to tap into the experiences of her grandmother to help select the college. The book of Proverbs is the same. It's the same as tapping into the inspired wisdom of David. You'll find in the book of Proverbs all types of verses that, are, that address a lot of the decision making we, we will make in life. And you'll also learn why it's important because it'll help lead us back to be able to see God for ourselves. And it makes it easier for us to integrate God into our lives when we're able to do just that. Now let's look over on page three. And uh, we're going to look at the, our verses of study today. And it's going to jump around a, a little bit. All of it for, is, will be from chapter one. But it'll be verses one through four. And then we'll jump to seven and 8, 10, 20, 21, 22, 32, and 33. So, if you have your Bible, uh, please turn to, to uh, Proverbs 1, and we'll proceed from there. Verse 1 reads, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. Ooh, that's the, that's the verse that tells you the purpose of the book of Proverbs. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. Verse 3 reads, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and, not, and, and, and judgment, and equity. Four, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge, and discretion. Verse 7 reads, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Ooh, you need to put a pen in that one because we're going to come back and look at that one. I'm going to read it again. Verse 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Okay? Verse 8, My son... Hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. Verse 10, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse. In the openings of the gates, in the city, she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and the fools hate knowledge. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But... Whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. Okay, let's, let's, let's go back and look at, like I said, there was, we were doing a little bit of jumping around there. Uh, but let me go back to verses 1 through 10. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, 
to the young man knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. The purpose of the book of Proverbs is summed up in verse 2, as I said. And then that's to know wisdom and instruction and to perceive the words of understanding. In other words, to teach readers wisdom so that they will allow wisdom to govern their lives. If we have wisdom, it will lead to godly living. Solomon is considered to, to be one of the wisest of all kings. He is the author of the book of Proverbs. God wants us to be righteous, just, and fair. The teacher is the one who provides the students with the guidance and good advice necessary because they may yet have the knowledge to make wise decisions. That's the student-teacher relationship. Teachers are supposed to help use their experiences to educate the student. A teacher is one that provides the student with, with the guidance and good advice that is necessary because they might not have the knowledge to make the wise decision. But verse 7 says that we are wise to have a healthy fear of the Lord. True wisdom comes from God. Therefore, we have to possess a relationship with the Lord. Those who fail to pursue wisdom is a fool. I'm going to say that again. Those who fail to pursue wisdom is a fool. Therefore, without God, there is no wisdom. Those who will not pursue wisdom are fools. Fools cannot distinguish between right and wrong, between good and bad. How many times have you heard people say and justify the crazy things that they did? They'll either say stuff like, well, that's not a good law. It doesn't benefit me. Well, uh, I had good intentions. You know, I, 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 you know, I made a bad choice. But I had good intentions. Okay. What? If you don't have God in your life, how can you really de determine right and wrong? Because you know for yourself there are laws on out that are laws on the books right now that you will sit there and say, hmm, how did these laws, why should I abide by these laws? Some of them don't need to be on there. Some should have been on there in the first place. So when you look at man's laws, it's to benefit whoever, whoever's in charge at the time. God is first, last, and forever. So, you need to understand who we are and whose we are. People who are arrogant consider themselves as self-sufficient will reject the need for dependency on anyone else. Mm. Imagine 
Imagine politicians. Oh my God. And then I, <laughs> I'm trying to be, not to be political, but there are political leaders that is all about them. And they talk about all that they've done. And they haven't done jack because you can't because you can't tell. Anytime you can't see it, how do you know it's been done? You know, so uh, they will reject the idea that the need to depend on, that there is a need to depend on God or anyone else. They do not understand that God is the source of all wisdom. Families are the foundation where children should learn about loving and honoring God. You know, there's this there's an old saying that's, that says, uh, the family that prays together stays together. If you, if you pray together, you stay together. And you stay on one page and you always feel encouraged. Parents set the example. So therefore, listen to the parents and not the fools of the world. All right, let's continue on. Uh, and I'm going to continue to read the remainder of the, of, the, of the verses. Verse 20 says, Wisdom cries out without. Excuse me. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the openings of the gates, in the city where... She uttered her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But Whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. In these verses, wisdom is personified. They ask the question of how long will you be foolish? Also the question of why do we go down the same paths others have gone and be destroyed? We live in God's wisdom. We will live in safety and peace. He will guide us as we face challenges. If we ask for wisdom to make the right choices, we will be granted that knowledge. Wisdom must include God. Otherwise, it's mere foolishness. What we learn in Proverbs is that everything that we go through in life has been addressed by God. Because he sees all and he knows all. He already knows Who's going to do what? We have to find God so that the promises made to us can be fulfilled. We have to be able to relate to God. We have to we have to share in the love and the respect for one another. We have to we have to learn life's lessons. And the best way to avoid pitfalls is to find someone or some, yeah, someone that has gone through the things before 
and have successfully navigated the storms of life. The book of Proverbs offers us that road map through the darkness and through the trials and tribulations of life. It is the word of God. It is information by God, from God, by one of the wisest of all men, penned by, by the wisest of all men, Solomon. Heavenly Father, we'd like to thank you. We'd like to thank you for create for the creation of the, the book of Proverbs. Heavenly Father, we pray that more people will read the book of Proverbs to follow the instructions because it contains all of the, 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 the issues that we will face all the, the bumps and the block, blocks and things that come our way can be addressed so that our lives will be as you have them. We have to ask that you continue to open our hearts and our minds that we may be, be able to receive them. For these and many other blessings, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. This was a as my mom, as I said, my mom would say, one of the, the books that uh, is necessary. I mean, it's, this, this should be required reading. Uh, the book of Proverbs. And just about everything in the book of Proverbs you will run across in your life. Again, we ask that you you all continue to be safe. If you need, as I said, if you need a book, contact me. Contact Sister Bonds in the office. She has some there. Give her a call. Let her know that you're going to come by and pick one up. Um, uh, and we look, we want everyone to be safe. And we look, look forward to seeing you real soon. Thank you. God bless.